Hi there. Um, I've been exploring uh, Epstein's model of civil violence um, and agent-based computational approach. And I thought that I might do a video on it because it's really interesting um, looking at the um, agent-based model and how local interaction produces um, global effect in a, in a society. Um, this paper is called um, Modeling Civil Violence and it's been published at the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America or PNAS and um, the article explores uh, an agent-based computational model of civil violence. Um, there are actually two variants of the violence model um, but I'm exploring only the first uh, uh, model. Um, now the first model is is right here. Um, it's sort of a generalized rebellion against central authority where agents, um, members of the general population can become active um, or actively rebel based on their perceived grievance towards the government's legitimacy and the hardship they experience. And in the model also there are cults which are the forces of the central authority who seeks out and arrest actively rebel rebellious agents. And um, so this model has a few equations. Um, and you know one of the equations is the is the uh, the grievance. Okay? Um, and you have the hardship and also you have the government legitimacy. How this works is um, you know so H is assigned to each agent um, at the start of the simulation, so the you know so each agent will, will get a, a uniform uniform distribution um, of of the the present uh, condition. So 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 you can you can represent the diversity across all agents. So all agents will get very dissimilar hardship in society. It, it may be that you know they are poor or or they suffer certain um, you know, certain hardship as all society uh, does. So, uh, so that value is assigned across all agents. How many agents depend, depends on the uh, cellular automata world, which I'll show you later. So at the start of the simulation, all agents are assigned a value from 0 to 1 um, of their perceived hardship. And government legitimacy is a, is a constant. Um, across all simulations, so while well, it can change eventually, you could decrease it, increase it over simulation, and see what happens. But you know, it's it's um, I assigned it zero point eight two, um, so the legitimacy of the government is quite high. You can assign it zero point two, which caused a lot of problems. You know, which we will explore later. Now the grievance, how this works is, um, because of the one minus legitimacy. Let's say if the government you know, as a, has zero legitimacy, then whatever it is, you know, the, the H is, it will be the H. But if the legitimacy is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, it cancels all, all out, and 0 multiplied by H is 0. So the grievance will be 0 if the legitimacy is high. If it's really low, then the grievance will be really high. So that's how this equation works. Now the other equation is um, the uh, it's the probability of arrest. So at any time, you know the agent will look around, you know in a cellular automata world. You know, the agent will look around and see in its visibility or proximity how many agents are around and how many cops are around um, this particular agent, and so. It, you know the agent will decide whether to rebel or to keep quiet. If you know, um, so we can we actually explore this in in the Scilab. Um, now Scilab is a very you know very good package. It's like MATLAB except it's free. It's an open source cross platform numerical computational package, and it contains a high level numerically oriented programming language that makes it easier program um, you know to draw graphs I, I use it to draw graphs you know plots 
and they explore general uh, numerical computation uh, for my scientific papers. Now, um, now this graph uh, shows, so you have, you've got A from 0 to, to 100, that's just a number from 0 to 100, um, C from 0 to 100, so that's just a sort of a least. And that's the equation um, seen here. Um, and C is the cox, okay? And over here, the A is the actively rebelling agent. So what this does is, um, and, and this is K, uh, the K value. Uh, so let's just generate the graph graphs and let you see what, what that is. So if, if that's that, you know, this value, you know, the, the higher the number of cops, you know, around 20 active agents, so rebelling agents, uh, if there are more cops, then the probability of arrest gets higher and higher and higher. Okay, and if we put it as one, what happens is that, you know, this sort of uh, goes higher. Okay, so the, the gradient is higher. And if you completely remove the one, that you know, then it just basically flips that around, which is not right. Okay, so that's what we want. So from you know, um, if there are, you know, uh, there are, let's say there's just um, one activation, then you get, you know, um, a graph like that, okay. But if you have twenty agents around, you see that you know the this is more more appropriate. Um, if we go get to the console and clear the console, okay, what we can do is let's just generate the numbers. Um, so let's say one minus exponential uh, e is two point three times. Um, if there are one cop over three active agent, then the probability of arrest is zero point five four each. Okay, but if there are you know three cops over three three active agents, then the probability of arrest is really higher. So the higher you get, ten cops for actively three agents, probability of arrest is very high. So the higher the number of cops around you, you know, the less you want to rebel because, you know, if you're throwing a stone alone on the street and there are three cops, you will get caught. But if there are 20 persons, you know, if there are 20 persons throwing, uh, you know, 20 persons throwing rocks, you know, on the, on the retail outlet, this window, then, you know, it is very... Uh, very unlikely that you can be captured by the cop. So that's what that equation means. Now, um, now this this particular formula is to decide whether the agent rebel or not. And G is the perceived grievance calculated from here. Um, N is the agent's net risk, which is um, risk aversion uh, times P. And and the so the, the risk aversion is also similar to age. It's a, a uniform distribution given to the agent at the start of simulation. And that's, that interacts with probability of arrest to give you the net uh, risk. So if the agent felt that, that you know, the risk is over a certain threshold, then the agent you know, will rebel. Otherwise, the agent will just keep quiet. Um, uh, a uniform distribution. I have uh, I have shown you know um, generated a picture earlier, which I can find. Um, so let's let's go to okay. So it it sort of looks something like like this. Okay. So the random number in, in Java, Java's random package generates a number that is sort of a, a uniform distribution across uh, all values with a theoretical line around there. 
Okay, so all agents, you know, if there are so many agents, you know, these are the numbers that each of the agents will, will have, except that it's, it's um, from 0 to 1, so it, it's similar across around here. Okay, but if generally the trend looks like that. Okay, now uh, the next step is to uh, to look at you know, some of the graphs that uh, has been generated. So let's go, go back to Epstein's uh, graph. So, so these are the, you know, the, the code that generates graphs. So we can have a look. Um, let's close this. Okay, so this graph shows the probability of arrest um, based on the cop population. Okay. Because the higher the number of cops are run, um, you know the the higher the probability of arrest. Okay, so that's basically you know it basically generates um, the graphs. And what's cool in in Scilab is that you can you can scroll in and scroll out. Okay, um, perceived grievance um, and hardship and legitimacy. So these are the graphs that's been generated using Scilab. Now uh, you know we've we've explored the general uh, equation and the next thing is to come to look at the, the you know the model actually in action okay so that's you know that that's what we want to do next so this is the model that uh, we'll be using to uh, simulate Epstein's civil uh, violence now um, it's a, a cellular automata you know sort of a grid where the agents lived and you know the, the the space around the agents are sort of the you know proximity to the other agents so the the blue ones they are the cops and the green ones they are the neutral agents you know the agents that are not rebelling and the red ones are the agents that have actively rebelled awaiting uh, the cops to capture them and uh, this is a screenshot, so it, it is not the start of the model. You know, at the start of the model, um, it's all usually neutral uh, with cops moving around. There are three rules to this uh, simulation cycle. And, you know, the first rule is that the agents move. Okay. And the second rule is the uh, calculation of the net risk of being captured by any cops around them and you know taking action okay so that's the the, the civil agents rules so the civilians they go through movements they also go through you know actively calculating uh, the grievance and also rebelling if the there are less cops around then and more agents um, for the cops they they have two rules the first rule is that they move around Okay, uh, move around, and the moving around of both agent types of agents is based on the radius. So, if for radius of seven, okay, um, for civilians and the radius of uh, seven for cops means that seven steps, okay, from let's say this agent, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how far the agents can see and move. So the agents could be jumping anywhere around that region. Okay. Um, now the perception of uh, well the calculation of that risk is also based on the, the steps. So, so if the agent is here, you know, then seven steps, five, six, seven. So that's the area that the agent will evaluate, you know, um, for cops in and the ratio with the active agents. Okay. So for for example, if this agent is almost active, and there's so many cops around. Okay, one, two, three, four, okay, five cops within the proximity, then you know the, there's a high probability of this agent getting captured. So the agent will not rebel. But for this agent, you know, because there's so few cops around and there's so many active agents around, you know, these agents will actively rebel. Okay, so so this you know the, the equation where we showed earlier, you know, where C and A uh, the ratio is C and A. This is the equation that that calculates, uh, you know, that that is the local interaction. So in any complex systems, the you know you have 
you know, population entities moving around and they interact locally. You know, they can't see globally, so they merely interact locally. But through their local interaction, emergence occurs. And, you know, globally you see patterns because of that, those local interaction, okay, local to their vicinity. Um, so now, uh, we want to run this, this agent-based model, modeling um, uh, cellular automata. Um, well, just to introduce you to my Java framework of God, you know, um, I'm programming this, programming this for, for, um, for some time. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a framework. Uh, for all types of agents, not merely cellular automata agents. So, you know, we've got um, agent, you know, um, carnivores, herbivores, and so on and so forth. And, you know, in a continual, rather than uh, cellular automata based simulation uh, sim environment, you can see my other videos, for example. But for this particular uh, demonstration, I'm going to just show some of the uh, Epstein model I've been programming using the framework. It's, it's really easy. But this video is not about my framework, it's about Epstein's model. So that, that's what the, Now, at, at the start of the simulation, I've set the active threshold, so that's the net risk, okay? If the net risk is over that threshold, and that threshold is 0 0.1, if it's over that, then the agent will rebel. Government legitimacy as a start, I've set it to 0 0.82. Jail term is 20, so every time an agent is captured, you know, for 20 cycles in the simulation, it will be in the prison cell, so it will not be active. And the radius for both civilians and cops are seven. And initially, I populated the agents with uh, 2150 people altogether and um, 200 cops. And we can see what happens. So now, um, see the agents are moving around and the civilians are moving around. And at some point, some agents, they rebel and they're captured immediately. Okay, but at other points, you see, you know, active rebellion spreading across the landscape. Okay, we're going to run this through and, and see what happens. Okay, at a certain point, agents rebel and they just saturate the landscape until the cops come in to capture them. Okay, so that's what happened. Uh, let's try to make it bigger. Okay, um, I'm going to change this around. Um, eventually I'll be building a, a better interface to deal with you know, some of these um, variables. Run this through, see. Okay, and the refresh rate and my other use of this GPU is is causing this very uneven uh, uneven uh, buffering. Okay, but you can see that you know the agent spread across, you know, the active rebellion spread across, and before they're being captured. Okay, and if you run the simulation for uh, a little while, okay, and it's a big, huge rebellion. Think about the Arab Spring. We've just seen what the model does with these variables. And let's try to change the legitimacy to 0 0.5. So this government isn't doing very well. And let's also change the jail term for actively rebelling agents to 30 days, 30 cycles. And we'll just leave the cops to be 200, you know, um, with, the, with the ratio to 2,150 people. And see what happens to the model, and see we see more more rebellion than is usual. Okay, just save it, and <clears throat> let's run it and see.
Okay. Um, there will be definitely more re agents rebelling, and then more agents are in jail, so you get less agent across time. And then once the agents have been released, you get immediate rebellion because the government is, you know, as a legitimacy of twenty. Uh, uh, 0 0.5 okay so if you look at the graph you will have more events okay rather than you know um, a quiet time but it's it, it's it will be more of a cycle okay so that's what happens when we change the variables <coughs> we can do that again so maybe increasing this to 0 0.9 <coughs> jail term to be 1 zero and let's just leave that the same and see what happens okay because the legitimacy of the government is quite high you get you know almost no rebellion. Okay. Right. So let's change this right back um, to maybe six uh, or just five. Jail term to be thirty um, as before, but decreasing the radius of the cop and the civilian. The the radius of visibility and evaluation of the other agents okay and let's see what happens okay kind of strange because the visibility determines the collective rebelliousness of the agents. Okay, it is more periodic than what we had originally in the first simulation model. Okay. Okay, I think that you know maybe it is because the agents um, evaluated within the cycle the uh, the visibility radius of less cop in the surrounding region, so it rebels more frequently. Okay, that may be the case. Um, let's change this back. Okay, um, and we'll leave that the same, but this time. Let's change the cop radius to to a hundred. So taking fifty percent off, and we'll see what happens. Okay, again, you get very frequent rebellion. Okay, we're going to try another thing. Um, let's make the legitimacy of the government higher and immediately see what happens to that variable. Okay, this is as usual as compared to earlier when the agents didn't rebel at all. Okay, let's move this back to 8.2 as the original value okay, and see what happens.
Hex seems to be also periodic, but you know, encompassing a larger uh, distribution of active agents. Okay, so the spread is more even across the landscape. Okay, very interesting. Now, um, so going back to the original variable of twenty and two hundred. Okay, we see we can tell the difference for that. Okay, pockets of rebellion because there are more cops around. Okay, and and it's spreading. Okay, and you know diffusing across the landscape, not covering the whole landscape as the cops stop the rebellion halfway through. Okay. And if this simulation is run um, for a period of perhaps around 600 cycles, you'll see uh, a concept called punctuated equilibrium, which I'll just show you in Scilab. So coming back to Scilab, um, we have got a file that shows all the uh, population capture of the model that we've seen just a while ago and this piece of code basically generates graphs on the population levels okay and we can have a look in the graphic window let's make it bigger um, sorry for this line is a bit um, vague but you know it's just showing that the citizens are green and there's the population of citizens across time, and there's the population of the cops, uh, of those who are jailed, okay, um, across time, and also the active agents, okay, um, you know, rebelling at certain uh, simulation cycles. So they are totally around 520 uh, and 10 or so simulation cycle. Now you can see that um, there's something called the punctuated equilibrium within uh, the simulation uh, of the population. Now the punctuated equilibrium in social theory is a sort of a method of understanding change in complex social systems. Um, it studies certain phenomenon. You know, for example, if, if there's a policy change or, um, or conflict uh, such as what's seen here, then you know most system they exist in a, an extended period of stasis, which is you know um, uh, equilibrium um, in activity, and you know suddenly it's punctuated by sudden shifts in change, such as you know this shift, and that's what happens in the model. So the model sort of models phenomenon in society where you have sudden change you know but all across certain periods of equilibrium and this model I find very interesting so I thought of making this video just to explore and just to explain some of the concepts that you may find useful thank you very much for watching and please subscribe comment and like. Thank you.